So today we're going to talk about the ones that got away for the Transformers War for Cybertron Kingdom line. Now keep in mind, this is all really just kind of based on rumors in a lot of ways. There has been this going indication that Wave 3 is going to be the end of the Kingdom line and there will not be a Wave 4, combined with the fact that there seems to be some kind of subline in the near future with this Golden Disc subseries. There's a lot of mixed information and we don't know very much, but what we do know is that when Kingdom was first shown to us, we were shown this gigantic mural with a whole bunch of characters that were going to be part of this this universe, if you will, this toy line. And ultimately, in the end, certain characters didn't make the cut, ultimately. And we're just going to kind of go over those and who they were, what they could have been, and uh, where they could still potentially appear in the future, or not. We shall see. So... The mural had a whole bunch of characters, and as the weeks and the months passed, we started to see those characters in physical toy form. I mean, even stuff as early as the arc and its robot mode were shown in this mural. And I'll post, obviously, the mural on the bottom, and we'll get into all of that. Now, there was four characters that we have still not seen any kind of figures of, and it's pretty much confirmed that those were characters that didn't make the cut in the end. So the first one that we have here is that of the Autobot Minibot Gears. Now, he would have fit in probably very well with that of Huffer and all the other more now deluxe-sized Minibots, which I'm loving the idea of the Minibots not being relegated to just a small legend scale or even that of a Scout. Something that's more of a deluxe, something that almost even fits in with your Masterpiece displays. And I like that because while the chances of getting a Masterpiece Gears or Brawn from Takara in the future are pretty slim. They probably will happen one day, but it's going to take a while. Getting something in the deluxe scale within the Kingdom line, or even that of Earthrise with uh, with uh, Cliffjumper, it just gives more of a chance for that kind of stuff. It's not 100% accurate to the original Generation 1 designs, but it's a good facsimile in the meantime until the future comes, especially for something like Huffer, which really did a darn good job in a lot of ways. Now, Gears would have been great because Gears really just... He kept getting the short stick. I mean, the last really good Gears toy was probably during that thrilling 32-pack era. Yeah, that's probably it, really, for him in terms of good figures. Like, it's just, they keep that trademark around, they throw it on stuff, they do a reissue here and there, but it would have been really nice to get a Deluxe Gears. And it's not to say that we won't. It's just that, as as far as we're concerned for Kingdom, Gears was uh, left on the arc, so to speak, to uh, to snooze. Next one we got is the two different fossilizers that were shown here. The first one is that of this crocodile or alligator fossilizer. And this would have been an exciting one in a lot of ways because when I first saw it, I thought, well, with a little bit of retooling, a little bit of fun, this could potentially be also used for a Beast Wars first form basic croc Megatron. And then all the repaints that are built in with that, whether it be the purple Croc Megatron or the Albino Megatron, which never happened. That was supposed to be a Bacon exclusive. So there were so many different ideas that could be done just with that Croc Megatron. And it would have been fun. Heck, you could even get that that Soundwave Mutant Megatron. Excuse me, Megatron. Uh, croc Transformation, which had like the, the one that was like a bat and a croc with no robot mode was actually an Animorphs toy. Complicated history with that one. But either way, there was a lot there. And it probably would have been really fun too. You know, you could do the the croc head could be like a blaster. And from what we've already seen with the fossilizers, it would have been really exciting and really fun. And then you have the Sabretooth one, which is the one that's actually attached to the Optimus Primal design in this mural. Now... This one really shows in a lot of ways that this mural was also to show how the fossilizer gimmick was, at least in design concept, supposed to be implicated. And where it's like all the pieces come off of the the skeleton and then attached to a character to make armor. 
Now, obviously, we've seen now how fossilizers have been implicated with our toys, and it's not so much an armor as so much it has been really like how the modulators could attach to characters or before that battle mass. It's it's not so much an armor so much as it's just peg in holes for make-believe weapons and accessories in a lot of ways. But I guess when we were when this first mural was shown to us, the general concept was, wouldn't it be cool if these characters could come off and really make like armor? Like, here's this rib cage and it could be attached to Primal's chest and make like a chest armor. And like the side the two sides of the face of the the uh the saber tooth tiger could split in half a la like almost transmetal cheetor and attach on the hips and make like side hip armor and you know and then of course the rest of the spinal column and everything make a weapon or a whip it was it was pretty interesting but on top of that it would have been cool because we we never really got a saber tooth character in beast wars i mean we had tons of cats of different walks of life but we never really had a saber tooth and that would have been pretty cool would have been pretty cool the repaint potential who knows what they could have done with that i mean who knows especially with all the dinosaur stuff that we have i mean <laughs> think about it we w we have a triceratops we have a t-rex we have a pterodactyl and <laughs> then we would have a saber tooth we'd have all of the fossilizer minus one that would be the power rangers and then they combine to make a giant robot who knows what could have been done by the fans or by Hasbro, who also has the Power Ranger toy license, uh, to do all kinds of crazy stuff. Just imagine, just imagine if that Sabretooth one would have came out. All we would be missing was a, uh, a woolly mammoth or a mammoth, and we would have pretty much the original team. That'd be pretty cool. Either way, either way, I'm going off the rails here, but it still would have been interesting to see nonetheless. Uh, from that Sabretooth one, and who knows what could have been done with it. The last one here, and it's the one that, that kind of hits me the most in a lot of ways, is that of Polar Claw. Because when I first saw that mural, like, you could even go back in the segments on the podcast, that was the one I was, I was like, oh, man, Polar Claw. Polar Claw, to me, even when I go back to my fandom all the way back in 96 with Beast Wars, I always was like, that was a character... I really want it on the show. And considering that when you look at the mega price point in Beast Wars, like Scorponok was in the show. And later on with the other price points, it's like Inferno was in the show. And the Transmetal leaders of Primal and Megatron, which are mega class, were in the show. And yeah, there were some guys that were left out too. Like, okay, sure, um, you know, Trans Keto wasn't used but trans keto kind of sucked as a toy to be honest and baboom while he wasn't in the show that same design and literally 100 percent was just used in beast war second where polar claw he just got the shaft like he appeared in comic books didn't get used that much got beat up and if you read sins of the wreckers oof, i don't want to spoil but if you're a polar claw fan yeah he didn't get his uh, fair shake there either so it's, it's one of these things where I would have loved such a great toy, such a great design, and the little bat gimmick and everything. I would have loved for it to get a, a redesign, an update, and potentially due to this, potentially even being in some kingdom fiction. So that was the one that really hurt. It really sucks because you look at the, the kingdom version, or at least the art, and it invokes so much of the original toy but still has some new des design elements that smooth it out and m make it look really cool. Not to mention they probably would have also figured out a way to work in the bat gimmick. I, I would have loved it. I would have loved it. And that was the one that really, like, when I found out that, oh, by the way, certain ones are, you know, were on the chopping block, kind of sucks. Kind of sucks, and it made me kind of sad. But, I mean, those were the three that got, uh, excuse me, the four that got left behind here. And... As time progresses, we're going to be going into the next, I guess we call it, iteration of Kingdom in this Golden Disc subseries. There's the rumors of the Tigatron, of the Pterosaur. So there's a lot of meat still on the bone here. But from what we are told, as far as Kingdom is concerned, these four characters will not be in it. 
And that's not to say, like I said, it's not to say that they won't show up in the future of Transformers in a year from now or two years from now. We'll have some kind of sub-series and those characters will exist. But as it stands right now, that isn't the case. And and especially in Polar Claw, it's like me going like, they didn't have that trademark anyways. So I guess it wasn't going to be happening. I guess unless they do a reissue or something with that Beast Wars reissue line. But who knows how those are going to sell and if they're going to have... a stronger market to continue with a wave two and three of that considering how weak the generation one reissue line was and how much of it ended up in uh, clearance and stuff like that with walmart either way let me know what you think about these which one of the four were you the most excited about and you thought that really should have been really really should have been in the kingdom line i understand like again in my case it would have been polar claw but he would have have to been a mega scale, aka a Voyager in today's day and age. And then it's it makes me say, well, should we have taken out, let's say, Cyclonus and put him in the Studio Series 86 line and have Polar Claw in his place? That's probably how I would have wanted it. That's how I think if you would have did, did some moving around, it would have worked out. I mean, Studio Series 86 is going to be around for a while, in my opinion. I really do. I feel that we're going to get more of those characters from that subline, just like how the Studio Series line is just going to go on for a while. So I, in the same way that I feel Cyclonus would have found his place one way or another. Unless there's a narrative with Galvatron and everything in the Kingdom TV series, I feel that Cyclonus would have found his place just fine in Studio Series 86, where Polar Claw would have been a nice replacement for that opening wave, considering that Polar Claw was also kind of part of those early beginnings of Beast Wars. Mind you, there's that whole barbarian thing and the repaints that could have come from it. But that's the thing, too. There could have been repaints. We could have even gotten those that crazy panda repaint. Who knows? Who knows? Either way, let me know what you think. It's, it's sad, but these are the guys that got away. <laughs>